Assalamualaikum alaikum and a very good morning to everybody who's tuned into BTV World and are watching World this morning alongside the very fantastic, the very superb, the very amazing, the very excited, the very want to achieve everything in her life as well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she happens to be Ms. Shiza Hashmi and I happen to be Shazad Asan Khan. We hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well, that they, you are actually looking after all of those SOPs which are put in place by the government so that we can actually kind of come out of that pandemic which we eventually have but for the people out there in 46 different countries other than you being doing wonderfully well <laughs> we hope that you're actually ready to kickstart your day with us hello shiza how are you doing today i'm doing absolutely great thank you so much for asking <laughs> how are you doing by the way i really have to sort of uh talk about something over here. Yeah, sure. So there are days when Shazad and I, of course, along with the team, uh, decide or coordinate what we have to put out on screen in terms of colors that we match, yep. in terms of clothes we wear yep. or the decor, what not. <laughs> and this I morning, know where this is going. No, I, and this morning, I just want to appreciate how cooperative you are, right? <laughs> so I was like, listen, yellow is the color I'm going to do today. So we have to do yellow. And and being very honest, I mean, in men's wardrobe, there can be just a hint of yellow, maybe something in the tie or maybe like a pin or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, Shazad doesn't have <laughs> yellow, so he was very kind enough to actually uh, replace his pocket square with a yellow flower. Thank you so much for doing that for the sake of uh, our aesthetics as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shazad, for giving me the idea. And I'm always open for more ideas as well. So even if you have in the days to come some I better ideas, you know, we can certainly do that as well. But yes, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, hello to my flower over here. And yellow. we just uh, <laughs> were trying to actually match on screen as well, which I think looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. But other than that, Shiza, you know, how are you doing generally? You know, this is something which I need to ask you because okay. most of the time, this is the kind of conversation which people do avoid at time. Okay. You know, because nobody's going to ask you, yeah, okay, you know, kaise hai? okay, I'm hmm. But what we really need to know is whether somebody's doing fine or not. So, you know, just out of curiosity, I just want to know whether are you doing fine? Yes, Alhamdulillah. I hope you didn't have coffee over an empty stomach today. Ah, uh, unfortunately, I did. Oh, I shouldn't have. But thank you so much for asking. You're absolutely right. I mean, we do have the habit of going around and just casually saying, "Oh, how are you? What's up? What's up?" But uh, we don't want to listen to the answer what the other person is going to give, or probably we don't have the acceptance of, or you know, sort of even the patience to, uh, you know, sort of listen or hear to what true, they're true, going true. through. And also, on the other hand, Shazad, a lot of people are not comfortable, maybe because of c the cultural system or whatsoever, True. in telling people around them what yeah. they're going through as well. So for both the parties, actually, I need, uh, I need a moment to sort of pray and talk about. For people who are going through something or are unable to speak, I really hope and pray that your silent battles are going to get easy for you and for everyone who's going through something. Secondly, for the people who like to ask casually it's a good thing that you have the etiquette first of all but i want you to sort of polish it in a way that you're asking can be helpful to the person yeah. you're asking i mean ask a little emotional uh, with, with a little Just bit of emotional there. attachment as well hmm. alaikum. <laughs> or probably you know i think that what i can recall is that you can do it the way prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do it that anybody and everybody who will actually come to see him he will actually stand up greet that person look him into the eye and say whatever he wanted to say as well so i think that's one way where people can actually connect. So please make sure that whenever you're saying your salams, first of all, say your salams. Whoever's coming by, may it be a man or a woman, please make sure that you do that. And then just look them in the eye and be like, hey, how are you doing? You know, that's it. I think it's very simple. A lot of people are very shy, so please make sure that you do not expect it from a lot of people. Try doing it yourself. But other than that, Shiza, I think I've got uh, some amazing things to share. Okay. You know, and I want your feedback on that as well. So first things first. Let's go. Please, can we have the first slide today? Yes. Aww. Tourism is being promoted on Australian buses, you know, with uh, pictures of different places, beautiful places over here in Pakistan. They have been placed onto the buses in Australia. It used to happen earlier in uh, England and Canada London. as well. But Alhamdulillah, I think that now when uh, we've actually lost the World Cup to Australia, <laughs> uh, I think Pakistan tourism needs to be promoted in Australia and that's the only way how we can settle it. But what's your feedback on that? I absolutely love this idea. I, I, I knew about London and stuff, but I never saw this, so I think it's great. And um, 
it's so funny where you said that, of course, ever since we lost, they have to <laughs> sort of compensate. But yes, I think this is where uh, cross-cultural harmony can sort of develop as well. Imagine for the people being in Australia, not only Australians, for anyone, all the foreigners as well who've never been to Pakistan, mm. this is the first glimpse of Pakistan they will get or the first impression or idea of Pakistan. And I'm pretty sure it will definitely impress them enough to come down here and exactly, watch Exactly, and that's wonderful. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, that the credit actually, because when we speak about uh, England, mm -hmm. I've seen that there are a lot of, uh, you know, Desis over there, you know, who actually went for Pakistan. I don't know whether Desi is the right term, but, you know, a lot of expats who are over there and what they do is that they invest from their own pockets in making sure that they are going to advertise about hmm. Pakistan, you know, out of sheer love for their country. But not just that, you know, I'm going to kind of look for that picture where they've imported a Dulhan bus, you know, a bride oh. bus from <laughs> Pakistan because that's what we call it over here in Pakistan and it goes around on the streets of London. That's a picture which I'm going to bring in tomorrow, okay. inshallah. But other than that, there's another one. There's mm -hmm. something very interesting because we talk a lot about reading and how people are literally forgotten to read books as well. But there's this auntie in Karachi who's actually doing a phenomenal job. Here it is. I have a new job. It's going to be a lot of fun as the Kitab Gadi, the book car for children will move around Karachi city and children will be reading these books and listening to stories. Wow. How fun is so that? So, Ramana Hussain, you're definitely doing a great job today. And imagine that she will actually be going around in a rickshaw. Wow. How amazing is that? And you remember, Shazad, this was probably a few months ago. We, we were discussing a story of a, of a man who made a camel library in uh, the yeah, deserts yeah, yeah, of yeah, Sindh yeah, as yeah. well. And we I love the it. idea. I absolutely love the idea of, you know, people, children especially, out of school, uh, street children, especially from downtrodden segments of the society, who do not have access to school, of course, and then do not have access to internet to get the yeah. uh, reading material. To actually provide all these books and all the education to them, to wherever they are, is definitely a blessing for them. And the kind of prayers these people will be getting, Shazad, is just something else. Exactly. Not so just that. I think at this point of time, I would actually uh, love to kind of congratulate and thank my entire team as well, yes. because they have been putting a lot of effort lately which obviously the results are visible and alhamdulillah we're doing great as well but uh, in order to kind of proceed further hmm. since we actually have a sign language <laughs> i already know that shiza needs to say something so shiza please go ahead well it's not a sign language <laughs> it's just you know uh, what is called mental tele telepathy yeah, no but all right so remember i told you about uh, so my in-laws live in karya right and it's so funny how we give out our personal information on TV every day. I yeah. shouldn't be doing that. Yeah, okay. Anyway. Uh, Kari is big, you know. I, exactly. <laughs> so we were renovating. Of course, there's a wedding coming up at our family as okay. well. And the Sehen area of it, it's yeah. sort of a village set up. And it's very fun to like be there out uh, as well. So one of the changes we discussed and made this time was in the Sehen area. Sehen is a, what is a Sehen? Balkany. No, balcony is balcony on the top, or right? probably terrace. No, it, a it cannot be a terrace. It's I mean, like it's a lot. Yeah, open house. space, basically, yeah. within the four boundaries of the house. Not a lawn, because lawn is supposed or to be patio. green, right? Patio. Or patio is outside your house. Anyway, so yeah. what we decided was within that small sahin, which was just concrete, we sort of made it into tiles. And on the sides, we made some kyariya. Okay. Yeah, and in the center, beds. yeah, in the center, we made a, we put a little, like, a... Uh, date tree sort of okay, wow. so it's an open space still the space is same the house is old as it used to be but that new addition is something so fresh and ever since we did that no one sits inside the rooms anymore we just want to sit in the sand and enjoy the sunlight and enjoy the small greenery it's just beautiful well it's beautiful and before you actually <coughs> kind of say anything else you know uh, i think it's beautiful and everybody uh, kind of needs to uh, feel great while they are at home as well but before we kind of talk about that i hmm. think there's something more important and she said that is that, you know, that there, there are a lot of people, there are a lot of entrepreneurs, there are a lot of startups which are coming up these days as well. And what they're doing is that they're investing their energies into doing something for their own. And All right. so, so what uh, today we want to do over here is that we obviously, you know, we're, uh, I mean, World This Morning or PTV World or any channel on PT of PTV would always want, uh, you know, inclusivity. They want equal distribution of assets and probably resources Definitely. to men and women. So this is something which we want to talk about that uh, how are women actually facing challenges in businesses and hmm. what business practices are out there. And not just that, you know, in addition to that, what kind of businesses should women indulge in? But let me be very honest, you know, b because with this question that what hmm. kind of businesses women should indulge in, I think everybody will have their own say. But today we actually have somebody who's proved herself, who's proved a metal that, you know, in business, this is something which people need to do. And what 
is that mixed strategy in between when we talk about economy and uh, strategy as well because you know it goes hand in hand people do not strategize they do not think for a longer period of time or probably two years or five years down the line so i think everybody needs to do that and why startups fail is something we want to talk but first we actually have a small package on business go ahead take a look good morning startup culture is the process of collective thoughts shared values and efforts which has lately become a center of attention for entrepreneurs in Pakistan. For that matter, the government of Pakistan has taken great initiatives, the provision of IT infrastructure, tax exemptions, and establishment of national incubation centers. In addition, the recently launched Kamyab Javan program, a youth entrepreneurship loan scheme, is also providing the youth with opportunities to utilize their entrepreneurial potential to the fullest through subsidized business loans. There's no doubt that Pakistan's youth is a potential gold mine. Nevertheless, Pakistani startup culture is still thriving. In 2020, Pakistani startups raised around $65 million, which is significantly higher than the previous years, and around $300 million so far in 2021. Meanwhile, the ease of doing business has also been improved in Pakistan. For that matter, Prime Minister of uh, Pakistan Imran Khan has announced that PTI's government is extending all possible possible support to foreign investors through the policy of ease of doing business. Apart from universities, governmental initiatives like the National Incubation Center is quite active and already supporting excellent ideas from students. Pakistan's government is working for the sustainability of entrepreneurial ecosystem as well as technical development of youth. Well, it's ever more interesting, of course, ever since the pandemic, Shazad, because when we talk about businesses itself, everything moved online. And since then, it's booming, not only mm. in the world, but especially in Pakistan. And to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about entrepreneurship and businesses, it knows no gender. Exactly. So let's talk about it, of course, without any further ado. Sure. The guest we have op over here, she happens to be a business consultant, of course, an entrepreneur herself. She is none other than Huma Ijaz. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Mm -hmm. For having me it's thank you very pleasure. much Umar, for joining us it's wonderful to have you over here. here and since you happen to be a business consultant so in the first place when anybody or everybody will walk into your office and be like hey you know what we need help for our business what is that one common mistake which everybody's making the first thing they ask me is what should we do to make money <laughs> i tell them <laughs> just do anything be patient and stay consistent hmm. okay and uh, of course there are things that you can do they ha have the financial feasibility some does not have the technical feasibility so you actually need to know what you actually want to do first that's All the right. first question you know thank you very much for saying that because m most of the times when startups do fail they fail they say because they really do not have a long-term planning and then people do not have enough finances to back it up as well and they didn't really do the market research so out of these three which one do you think is the most prominent in failures of the businesses or the startups? Startups. Okay, mainly if you talk about startups, unfortunately, we are having a challenging situation in Pakistan. Okay. A anybody, for example, uh, if you go to any uh, incubation centers in Pakistan, they would take uh, fresh graduates from college and they'll uh, encourage them to go for startups. But wherever I encourage them to go in field or industry, work for two, three years, gain relevant experience, make the right contacts, and then start your own startup. And save some money as well. The, the startups we are having are they fresh graduates, they just want investment and just start working. Yeah. They don't know what the direction they are going to. All they are seeking is investment. No, that's not the right approach to go for a business. And you know, I think I have an example in relation to that mm -hmm. and that is that, you know, uh, because uh, I think for the last three or four or five years I've been watching a lot of kids YouTube channels <laughs> and I've seen a lot of kids performing, you know, uh, you know, wonderfully well as well and making a lot of money for themselves and for their parents. You know, which is great. But then there's a time when I think that, you know, okay, every day if they're posting a new episode, that means that they might hardly be going to school. And then, you know, within my own brain, I was like, okay, you know, so I think that their parents might think that, okay, you know, this is towards the end of their education. That's what they will be doing, making millions of dollars probably. And, you know, nobody gets eventually this lucky that they make millions of dollars by the time they're 16 or 15 or 12 or 11 even. <laughs> so do you think that education you know, within the relative field where you need to go in is still relevant to kind of go and you know get yourself educated because you really wanted to be in business to do business studies rather than you kind of prioritizing that it's better that you go into the field 
invest your time over there, go sit with vendors, you know, talk it out with them, and that will be more fruitful. Which is more fruitful, education these days or having a hand-on experience within the market? Okay, I'll, I'll just answer your question in two categories. Sure, go ahead. The first thing is very interesting, uh, kids creating YouTube channels. In fact, I created my own channel Marshall. in uh, lockdown because wow. I had nothing else to do. So, I, that's a good so idea. Um, the thing is, that's basically creating a digital asset. Yes. I encourage every student, every Pakistani, every you auntie, everybody to create your digital assets because in the long run, it's going to pay you. Yes. For and sure. we're headed to a metaverse as well. <laughs> and the second part? Uh, second part uh, about education. Ed see, now there is a difference, education and skill set. Now, we are focusing on education. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to somebody that uh, our masters, MBAs, and you know, whenever we are hiring, we look for skill set, not for degrees. Yeah. So, having a certification or a diploma is more relevant to get you a, a job that can actually pay you. All right. So, education and uh, skill set, I think uh, we, we need to differentiate and understand what, what is going to monetize uh, or what, what is going to <laughs> help us in achieving the goals or the plans we have. In my case, but I if was. You have goals. <laughs> so, in my that case, happens. I still remember I was very young and I was very focused. I, I said, I will be the first uh, accounting firm, uh, women owned f uh, accounting firm, because wow. we are not given enough space in the market. So, uh, I, I, it was like, I, uh, it was like 15, 18 years ago. Yeah. At that time, we had a bit resistance because I, I come from chartered accountancy background. Like two years or three years. Oh, no, then, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no? Oh, okay. So, what we did, uh, I had the vision, but I had to go through a training process of 10, 15 years. Right. And when I started my company five years ago, it was only women. Then I said, no, we need to have inclusion for men as so well. Much. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank your you consideration. So, yeah. so, but, uh, so basically, uh, some skill sets or some businesses require a skill set. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. But um, you're absolutely right. While skill set is something no one can contest, yeah. but I feel like there are some avenues where the education comes in. For example, a lot of, uh, this is sort of a growing trend in Pakistan startups. And I absolutely love the idea because of course of the facilities provided by the government, the entrepreneurship or the ideas of new businesses have gone just up top, all right? Yeah. So, if you have the right kind of formal education or at least some sort of knowledge about that, you will be able to have the right kind of market research. Where my question is going is, you will see lately, for example, everyone, a lot of people, are coming up with the startup of uh, delivery apps, services, and there are of so many different types. Some will only have vegetables, some will entail everything, some will just have groceries, etc., etc. So. I don't know, where, are there any new ideas for people out there, first of all? Why does everyone hop on to one st simple idea when it comes to, you know, uh, starting a new business lately? Because this is what I'm seeing around us. Yeah, yeah. And this mm -hmm. is where I feel like the market research, the education part of it, or just the knowledge part of it. And I will in. give you an example as well that there's always been mushroom growth, for example, because this is what research says that genuine ideas will only come to 1% of the total population of the globe. The rest of the five or six percent will actually kind of copy. interpret or copy the idea <laughs> yes. exactly the same way and will be successful. For example, we do have Uber Cream example. Mm -hmm. We do have a cheese naan example. You know, there were a lot of <laughs> Nutella naan. Yeah, there were a lot of Nutella naan restaurants opening up as well. And then all of a sudden, six months, eight months times, you know, people were so fed up with those naans and people were so uh, worried about how much calories they're taking in. You know, they started to shut down. So what is the most sustainable idea of 2021 if we talk about women indulging in business? The most important idea would be finding what actually market needs. Okay. Yeah. You know, be creative, find uh, solutions, ask people around what are your challenges, what are the problems, and then think of the solutions. Right. And then you can convert it to a technology startups or anything. And then the, the thing you said six months down the lane, they close the business. Yeah. No, that's the consistency part. Mm -hmm. If you have to start, be be focused and commit to okay. whatever you are going to start. Otherwise, obviously, uh, uh, that's why some some businesses flourish, some but some disappear. So, Absolutely. but the second the second part of the question is that what kind of businesses? Because you do business consultancy as well. What kind of businesses do you think women should indulge in? So there are all the categories. For example, there are certain women who uh, have to take care of the kids and stay at home. Yeah. For though for uh, s recently, I, I am actually working on this uh, project two uh, women who, uh, who are you actually... you want to give it away? Because you're still working on it. There might be a lot of people it's listening education. to you. I'll okay. be, I, Business consultancy don't for worry. three ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. 
All right, so basically there are two women. Uh, uh, their children are going to school and high schools now. So uh, now they have time to, and they understand what the education process is. So yes. they are going to start a technology idea, in, including technology to educate kids. Yeah, okay. So this could scale up to a certain level. It's not like the online education, but this is a more focused approach. Yeah. And uh, for women, uh, there are other women as well. Unfortunately, we have a problem. Yeah. Uh, for, for all the qualified women, I, I deal with a lot of women who are actually qualified, got married, have kids, can, cannot leave home yeah. to, for the nine to six job. Now, every first thing is we don't have enough jobs in the market, That's and the competition true. is very fierce. So when you are unable to find a job, you can start something from home. Yeah. For example, I, I actually uh, suggested a few friends that start a daycare care home from ho uh, your home. Mm -hmm. yeah. You would be making more money than a person going out for a They're job. They're only so stressed up looking I after their own kids. <laughs> I literally asked my mom, because she lives in a different city, I was like, why don't you do that? Exactly. It's one of the you know, newest idea, she goes like, I'm done with doing it. I have five for of my own, I'm done doing no, that. For all those women who actually have acquired <laughs> qualifications and they are look, they are actually worried that their careers are gone because of the kids. Yeah. So now, so you have to actually find out what sort of um, uh, category you fall in and then you suggest, I suggest them that you should do this. And yeah. certain women who are actually very good with clothing, business, um, jewelry, makeup, hair, Absolutely. But you, don't you think that in times of uh, pandemic, obviously we're coming out of it, alhamdulillah, you know, we're very close yeah, to being, almost, getting yeah, normal yeah. as well. This is somehow a very risky idea because somebody else's kid coming in, you know, anybody can get any sort of virus these days, you know, there's malaria, there's so many things, you know, you'll have to look after. And then when it comes down to baby's health, obviously you cannot risk that. But now when we are talking about businesses, usually whenever I'm in a conversation with a lady and I talk about businesses, they would always come up with ideas which are home centric that you know because they actually have to be home but nobody kind of tells them that these days obviously the shops are getting closed and everybody's operating an online store I think that if you have to be at home and you want to kind of indulge into a bigger businesses where you have a reach of probably four or five different countries within one region hmm. don't you think that it's possible by sitting at home and I think everybody can do it these days it's just that that whatever I order online man it's just small on me so I actually ordered a five pack hoodie bag which said that you know it's an oversized hoodies and everybody loves oversized hoodies but you know it was a mistake again and I'm because never going to order anything online I again. I don't understand what oversize will be oversized on you mashallah. Yeah I mean that's what I'm thinking <laughs> you know because it was extra large in the first place and then it was so tight that I couldn't actually get my head through it as well. But you're absolutely right and you know where you're saying that uh, a lot of businesses are moving online and where you said everyone should create a digital asset do you know that in the fiscal year in the first part of this year as well and it's ever since the pandemic started, IT exports and online yeah. businesses actually increased yes. at a 17% gro yeah. growth it's rate a billion as, compared dollar to, industry now. as compared to any other export sectors in Pakistan, which is absolutely huge, of yes. course. So uh, towards the end of this segment, take your time, but I want you to sort of direct us out of it by where you said, you know, create your own digital asset. I want you to talk more about it, how to sure. go about it. All right, so luckily... So uh, Data is actually going to be selling in days to come. Yeah. It already, already is. Already is, yeah, yeah. NFTs. So, exactly. So what you can actually do is, uh, it's all the international platforms there that they allow you to um, create anything and just get it monetized. For example, there is there are the online courses you can sell. Mm -hmm. It's a great idea. And yeah, some of I, I, I met somebody, um, some pa a Pakistani girl as well, who is Singapore-based, and she has created this model specifically, specifically for Pakistanis. And we had a conversation, and she was focusing on how, how important it is to get your, your digital asset. Uh, you, if you are creating your YouTube channel, obviously it would ta it average takes two to three years to you know get you those two two lakhs plus you know income right. every month, yeah. which is a lot of money. If, if you have a, a full time job or a business, and uh, you work like twice or thrice a week. It's the max you have to do. Uh, it's not every day that you have to sit down and you know uh, document yourself. No, it's it's very simple. Once a week, maybe. Yeah. Once a week, maybe. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but if you see, it, it's kind of a um, cumulative approach. That your asset is going process. to monetize. It, like if you have uh, created it uh, this oh. year, even after seven years, you'll get paid for that. That exactly. is absolutely so true. You can create online courses, you can go for uh, freelancing, you can uh, create uh, content on YouTube, so social media, there are so many platforms, and you can run your own businesses as well. And, uh, 
And you know where you said that even the smallest of things, like for example, makeup, hair, uh, clothes, yeah. for that matter, anyone can do it. Just even makeup morning, tutorials. Of course. Just yeah. this morning, I was reading a mm -hmm. uh, news which stated, which talked about two men in Pakistan from different parts, of course, who are dealing in. V yeah. selling women hair and they say that they buy it from women for 4,000 per kg uh, in the wig market all, all right, yeah, all right. Uh, and hair extensions they buy it from Pakistani women in 4,000 per kg and eventually they sell it to Chinese markets for 15,000 per kg and they say <laughs> Pakistani hair make the best wigs and extensions well, I mean I don't think that it's it? a good business idea for somebody <laughs> no, who's got hair in grams Shazad, you, you know, have probably no idea. five grams, it, market, grams. It, is. <laughs> it is it yeah. is for sure it's a market it's a all right, so you have you have yes, a question exactly. to so wrap towards, it up. Towards the end of this segment, there's just one simple thing, you know, for all of those women who are actually going to draw inspiration from you today. I want you to kind of tell them that, you know, that obviously within our culture, women do face a lot of challenges. Um, today, we're not going to focus on the challenges they actually have to kind of come over within their own houses or homes. But what can be the challenges faced by women, especially in the marketplace? See, the first thing is uh, sometimes you've been to, you get a treatment that you're a woman, you can go first in the line. So I tell them not, please kindly don't treat me as a woman. We are just a equal uh, resources. I will wait in the queue for my turn. Okay, and now right. this is kind of a mindset challenge that we are still facing. Secondly, uh, another challenge which Alhamdulillah I would say we have overcome. Like 15 years ago, as I told, it was a very, very difficult you were situation. Three years old, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So now, when I get calls from um, my colleagues from different uh, uh, from Possibly. different industries yeah. in Pakistan, they call me. They would ask me, please refer a resource, a CFO, and it should be a female. And that's the proud moment Mark because right. we've made it. So yes, um, it was a challenge we overcome. It we so it's not that it's only women who face challenges. Men face the same challenges. Exactly. So and if if we don't have to just talk about we are women, so our society over it. No, that's wrong. Well, I think it's Business great. And, and you know, I do not want to sound stereotypical as well, but I think that you know because Amis are so good at you know kind of maintaining ghar ka kharcha, yes, yes. You know, so I think obviously yes. everybody needs to actually have a CFO yes. that needs to be a lady because they're so good with money, ladies and gentlemen. Don't say that men will be offended. <laughs> no, they won't be because they're good with earning as well and I want women to be good with earning yeah. and kind of share the same uh, jazba where, you know, when, when they earn money, they go back home and they give it all to their families. So I think women need let's to let's reciprocate as Let's well. be honest, 51% of the population is women. women yeah. If we oh, don't correct. contribute, how would the economy bro grow? I Would think that's imagine? how men will be eventually then if you're not going to go contribute. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Amma. It was wonderful to have Same you over here. here and to have such a lovely chit chat with you. Thank you very much for giving inspiration to a lot of women who are out there and even to men. I think there will be a day, inshallah, in our life when we really won't kind of classify it as men or women yeah, and then just talk about businesses. Yes. That, of yes. Course, and yes. I'm really, really hoping and waiting for Inshallah. that particular day too. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, on this note, we are definitely headed out for a very short break. When we come back, I'm going to reiterate the story of my Karia Place renovation yeah. where I started with Shazad and, and we'll talk about how that sort of changed. I think today it's all about women, ladies and gentlemen. So let's okay. do it. We're actually <laughs> heading out towards a short break. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Good morning.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For everybody who just got tuned into PTV World, you're watching What This Morning alongside my very amazing co-host, a wonderful human being. She happens to be Miss Shiza Hashmi, and alongside her, an amazing super being, <laughs> and he's Shizah Hassan Khan. But earlier, ladies and gentlemen, we were in conversation with Miss Huma Ajaz, who actually had to share a lot of experiences as a business consultant. And so that much to learn from yes, her. Yes, exactly. She shared ideas which were very pertinent to, for women and uh, in relation to how, what kind of practices women should be involved in when kind of looking for businesses. Right. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, to, to be an entrepreneur is actually a drive which comes from within. And such is the course of any dedicated professional, which is why in this segment what we are doing is that we are actually going to be in conversation with people who had such drive. They came together, they had the same energy, same vibe. They wanted to do something different, which wasn't really done before. And since they actually chose to be architects. Oh, wow. Yeah, but you had a story to reiterate. I actually have a lot of stories. But you're, you're right, Shazad, of course, when we talk about business or expanding it, there's definitely no boundaries to it. And I admire people who know their direction or yeah. who know their goal or who Absolutely. know what they want to study and sort of pursue that. <laughs> so we have two similar people over here in the studios. And like Shazad said, they are definitely architects to sort of just uh, connect a small story about it. So I told you, right, how yeah. we sort of renovated our... How you uh, our put a date uh, palm tree in the middle of, uh, you know, an open space within yes. the house. And now nobody wants to sit in the room and everybody sits outside. And it's such outside. a minor change. And yeah. to be honest, we did not change anything around it. Not the walls, not the paints, no nothing. Just a small, well, the tiles, of course, and the greenery. And it's such a minor change. But can I tell you, it's so refreshing, to be honest. Exactly. So even if someone's working on their laptop now when we go back home, or even if uh, auntie, my mother-in-law, even if she's doing her... Uh, cutting and whatnot, we all sit in that space because it's so refreshing. I okay. feel like it's also the color green, right? Exactly, it might be. And you know, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, the architecture does have an impact on the humans and the human do impact on the architecture, it's uh, vice versa. Right. But this duo whom we have over here in the studios, ladies and gentlemen, they were here, I think, a year or two years, one and a half years ago. Okay. I was about to say dead sal, but yeah, <laughs> it's all right. Very and that was the time when we were talking about how people do not have this mindset of actually hiring an architect. But mm. I think that Pakistanis have really progressed, you know, within the urban cities. And now they really want architects to be in there because, number one, they do save a lot of money. Really? For people who, yes, for people who do not certainly know because they exactly know the kind of structure you want and what material needs to go in. Hmm. And so just having a takedar or a contractor won't really save your life. So That's number true. One, obviously, we are going to talk about whether that mindset has changed or not. And then people coming up with smarter solutions and cheaper solutions for constructions. Because, you know, this is what we have been seeing in advertising all of our lives as well. You know, think, things like that. You know, so, so what we really need to kind of talk about is what kind of designs will actually have a greater impact. So without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by an architect. She happens to be Ms. Subal Munawar. Hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Wa alaikum assalam, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. And alongside Ms. Subal Munawar, ladies and gentlemen, we're lucky that we've actually been joined by an architect once again. She happens to be Ms. Nisha Nasir. Hello, assalamu alaikum, good morning. Assalamu alaikum, good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very much for joining us. Wonderful to have you. So what has changed over the last one and a half years? Pichet date sal mein kya tabdeel hua? Uh, a lot has been changed, obviously. Uh, if we talk about the humans that we, uh, like how we consider, as Pakistanis, how we consider uh, architects mm -hmm. now, so uh, it's actually much better. And according, and if we talk about materials and also, yeah, there, there are many new things and new ways of architecture that has come to Pakistan now. So what architects of Pakistan, now what we're doing is that we're trying to, you know, uh, catch up with the world. Okay. Because so, uh, so I'm going to sort of, you know, direct you uh, to some questions in a way. Of course, th whatever you're saying makes sense in a way that, yes, we are trying to be at par with the world. Mm -hmm. But for me as a layman who has no idea of, you know, this thought might have gone behind it in mm -hmm. terms of architecture. What looks to me is we're just going for luxury, luxury, luxury. We're going for uh, New York style apartments. We're going for this, we're going for that without <coughs> the same space or the same system. Yeah. So are we, is it, is that feasible? It is actually feasible, but if you if we talk about uh, space, I think Pakistan has more space than New York and or don't any you think other we're country. Yeah. Unut what's the right word? Like not u utilizing it in a right way. No, obviously that's why where we come and that's yeah. why you hire architects because right. that's how we're supposed to work. We're supposed to utilize this space in its maximum capacity and mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, some uh, one can live the way they want to live. Everyone has their own requirements and every client has different requirements. So that is how we actually, you know, make up the whole plan and everything so that the person who's living there, feels good. they can, yeah, yeah they feels can enjoy good about right. themselves Because I think, you know, people who actually make houses are the ones who really have saved every single penny over the years and they're like, okay, you know, this is what I've idealized. And, you know, to kind of interpret that idea into, um, you know, becoming, an execution, executing it and then kind of living in it is something which can be really challenging. Right. So which is why, Nisha, I'm going to actually ask you, you know, what, what are those lines which you guys are these days working on as well? And what are, because people are talking about renewable energy sources as well, you know, there's solar plants coming in. Green steel and, for and, that. And, and yes, obviously, people want, you know, lesser harm to the environment. So what are those lines you guys as architects are working on? Um, since we realized actually that um, architecture has a very um, architecture impact has an impact on people and yeah. people have an impact on architecture yeah. and uh, since architecture has a cult it has like a cultural impact also right. and religious impact on architecture so we've actually realized to design according to those lines mm -hmm. it is very important to design sustainability uh, according to sustainability Yes, light, ventilation, all of that also has an important factor. Right. So we're trying to design buildings that are very sustainable. They're well lit, they're ventilated, mm -hmm. uh, because um, if you're in a dark space, it's going to have an impact on you. Right. You're, um, you can be less productive and opening up spaces, connecting, like you just spoke about how the palm tree has a very big impact on how your lifestyle has changed. Right. Just like that, how transparency and uh, broadening the perspective of how you see things uh, can have a very big impact on how space can have um, help us grow or help us, you know, right. um, be more productive. But even a lot of open spaces for for a for a single man in the house will actually uh, make him a little worried about you know something like that. You know, yeah, it, sure. it gets a little scary. I think you really need to be very <laughs> brave inside your own self to actually have a lot of open space in your house. And be by yourself and be like, okay, <laughs> but that also depends on, yeah. on where your property is. <laughs> yes. So, all right, uh, girls, you you are of course making some oh, brilliant yeah. points over here, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm going to tell you sort of a case study. It's not a case study, a real time example where I want you to give me solutions. So, just yesterday, I was in conversation with a friend, and we were discussing on what property she should get in a country outside Pakistan. Yeah. And so in Pakistani terms, Marla is this measuring system, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. And that space, will, yeah. it, it, it's a studio apartment, and that is three and a half Marla. And it's so spacious and cute. Yes. And I was like, how is this possible? I don't know what they did with that, just that small space, but it was so good to look at. As compared you know, to, and it reminded me. quite a lot of space for a, not, for a studio apartment. I mean, I mean, there I mean, were two beds. People construct uh, commercial plazas it was on four marla built. I know, it was That's just like stunning, 1, which square. reminded yeah. me yeah, of a 10 marla house in probably one of the sectors over here. And it was so tightly built and, you know, thick walls and just not enough space. So what might have gone wrong in Pakistani building systems? Basically, the whole uh, answer, it actually confines in the, this thing that the use, the p number of persons that are using that space. Oh. For example, like if we build something on three marla for just one person, obviously it's going to, uh, it's going to contain just one room and it's, it's a studio apartment. So there's, there's like, it's, it's basically, it's, it's an open plan. For so one person, yeah, right. exactly. And we do, we do have uh, people in Pakistan here who live, who, who are actually a whole, whole family that are living in three marlas or four marlas. Of so, course. you know, the number of people actually, the thing depends on the number of people, the spaces and all. So, the more the open spaces are there in a plan, uh, it actually is good for the, you know, uh, eyes and all. Definitely. So just to, because I feel like now that she spoke about it, I feel like I might have sounded a little derogatory. I did not mean that at all. So I think my question to reshape it again will to you, Nisha, will be, if a person has a space around three marla or, you know, smaller or even bigger, how can they utilize it in Pakistan in the best possible way? Um, our family structure is a lot different than the Western right. family structures. Yeah. We're like, um, <coughs> our dada dadi is generally living with us. Or probably in the Jaja basement Jaja. on the first floor. <laughs> yeah. And then somewhere the family's on the ground floor. Exactly. So if there's like, there are like 10 people living in uh, three marlas, <laughs> it's obviously going to sound a bit weird. Mm. But so if, yeah, go on. And sorry. And if we're like, uh, obviously, if you're just like one single person in three marlas, that's like a lot of space. So with a smaller space, do you think the best option for a bigger family would be to go? Uh, Vertical? Yeah. 
Is obviously, it? yeah. Okay. You know, only if the government allows you to kind of go vertically. The I government mean, actually wants us to go vertically. Yeah. Really? Yes. Yeah. So how far can we go vertically? Um, it depends on the. It depends how far you are from the areas where there's like civil aviation. Um, All right. I don't oh, know yes. what so to well, do that's that. wonderful, and I think that 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 will be the maximum utilization of the land. You know, in terms of going vertical as well, and you know, I think vertically when we talk about places, I think that the only best place I can think of vertically is a cinema house. Probably, you know, oh. that's where you go. You really want it to be huge, and you know, the ambience needs to be great as well. Which is why today, ladies and gentlemen, we're actually going to share a trailer from the film Harry Potter. Let's see. Uh, the do you first know anything ever. About it? Oh, okay. So let me tell you. Uh, this month, actually, these days, it we are celebrating 20 years of Harry Potter being on screen. Uh, how amazing is that? Of course, the books were there, but the first ever film, I think it was The Sorcerer's Stone, came out this. I mean, 20 years back. I don't and want it to was, say it on air, but and I've it never was insane. I mean, let, let's Potter take a look film. at the trailer. Of course, I'm just Love obsessed. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> all right. Just. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, finally we are seeing flying cars. Obviously, this is something which I am really interested in because fiction does become re uh, reality. So I really want to have a flying room, you know, probably <laughs> coming to office over a flying room and then using I it otherwise as well. I have a white owl as well. But yes, obviously the, the practices do change hmm. over time as well. So I'm going to actually ask about the best practices and the worst practices which you might have come across because there might be projects which you have started from ground zero but there might be some projects where they were 50% done and all of a sudden they contacted you, hey, Sambal yeah. Nishra, can you please come to our rescue? So it's a question <laughs> for both of you, best and worst practices in architecture. Well, I think it mostly depends on the client. So uh, for best, I would say, yeah, we've got really, really good clients. So I think when the client actually trusts us and, uh, you know, trusts the decision that we make. Yeah. So that's when we're having the best of the mm -hmm. time, actually. Because we can, we have the uh, liberty to design the way we want to yeah. and, you know, bring new things. And the client is not stuck on the, you know, Cut similar things. Them. Exactly. And yeah, if, <laughs> if the client is really good on cash and all. So I think that's really nice because we can, uh, you know, we have a whole space to design and we can design the way we want to. So but that's the best. you have a story best. to share of, or an example where you told them something and they agreed and it came out great? Yeah, uh, there was once, uh, like we did, uh, we were doing a, a house and uh, the client, uh, actually uh, the um, labor, they went against uh, our will and they, uh, oh. against the papers and all. So what they did was something that they actually ruined the whole washroom. And we're so critical about every single thing when we're oh, designing yes. a house, every tile, everything. So when uh, we went there and we didn't like it, and we were like, uh, we want the tiles to get off and we want everything to be changed and we want it to be the way we want. We and actually had so decided. <laughs> yeah, so, but the thing was that the client was so good and he didn't care about uh, this thing Tile's that, it, yeah, waste, yeah, the tile is going to waste and his money is going uh, into the gutter and all. So <laughs> he was like, yeah, okay, uh, whatever the architects are going to say, we're going to do that way. So it nice. was actually very, you know, good and it, it made us feel really happy that the client actually trusted it that way that he's not really caring about his money and all. So yeah, like that's that's what so client. Nisha, I'm going to actually kind of change a few words. I want to uh, tell something sure. about the best experience. Since Before you we talk, change your words. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Since you're talking about flying houses and flying bedrooms, uh -huh. so the best experience was when we actually convinced our client to make a pool on a bridge that connected one room to another room and it was a bridge that had a swimming pool. So that's, yeah. that was so the you, best experience. So you always have to swim I to go to another room? For real? Is no, I mean, they had other routes, but they also had that route of wow, connection. So and yeah. is this in Pakistan? Yes, I mean, imagine Can I go to their place? <laughs> yes. Imagine a bridge which actually connects one room to another one probably will be a house where you'll be going from one room to another room probably on your car or a bike as well. <laughs> but this needs is to have this huge space, which I believe idea. is a wonderful idea and you guys became, you know, brought into reality. But now, you know, because initially I said while we were introducing you that, you know, that there's uh, an impact of uh, architecture onto the humans who live in it. And then humans do have an impact on the architecture as well. So how do you interpret it? Do you know, is there any inter reality interpretation to it? Um, yeah, that's not just words. That is actually <laughs> how we do it. Yeah. She's uh, so cute. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, uh, so, um, I mean, since like society, religion, I just spoke about that, how it has mm. an impact on us. So we're actually designing spaces that work that way. For example, I'll just give you a very small example. Since um, we have this cultural thing that we keep our ma male guests distant from the right, right, right. house and uh, 
so in like Pajan house, ne bar ala kamra tha da better yeah. or yeah. something yeah. Right? yeah so so in like uh, for example how aran does work uh-huh. they uh, they have this space for guests Uh-huh. and a uh, guest can't just come inside so architecturally we're trying to design houses that have drawing rooms that are inside the house since drawing rooms we barely use them also right, right. they are very important they have like privacy th- they're very Im- important for privacy and all that but still we keep trying to keep them a little distant from the house we try and keep them on the back end of the house mm-hmm. if you've seen houses for example like one canal houses right. they generally have the drawing room based based on the based on the front of the house right as soon as you enter the house it's the drawing room yes. right so we don't want to do that okay because how often do you use your drawing room i think that just to study i mean not, not that i study anymore but that's why i use yeah, it yeah yeah exactly so i mean what's the point of having a drawing room on the front of the house yeah. mm-hmm. so we're trying to change that ideology of having a conventional house where uh, the drawing room is on the front right, and right. we're trying to bring it on the back and the living room is the main thing of the house where we actually spend the entire day and that's right. great and we want to kind of wish you a lot of more power and success and prosperity because you uh, two have been doing a wonderful job yes. so thank you very much for coming up showing up and you know giving us such minute details where how it can actually have an impact on your life and how you can feel great But for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, if you really need to kind of be in contact with these two wonderful architects, we're going to share the details on our Facebook pages as well. The names are on Twitter. Uh, well, this morning without <laughs> a G. Daily Motion and YouTube. Well, this morning. And the fabulous of is going to be at? Five past midnight tonight. Till the next time, ladies and gentlemen, look after yourself. One, two, three, let's do it together. Good, Good morning. morning. Take care.